Hey there, and welcome to Jedi as Code. Today, we're going to be talking about the HashCorp Certified Terraform Associate Exam. I recently got certified last Thursday. It took me about 30 days to go from complete beginner to passing the certification exam. So I'm here to share some of the tips and tricks I picked up along the way for studying and on the exam. Um, so stick around if that sounds interesting to you. And as usual, I provided a markdown version of this entire lesson. So if you don't want to hear me talk or you want the TLDR, um, head to Jedi as code slash resources on GitHub and you can find all this information on there. So to give a quick introduction, again, it took me about 30 days to learn Terraform and study for the exam and eventually pass. But to provide a little bit of background, again, I wasn't too familiar with Terraform before. It was something that I had heard of. I knew what it did, but I actually had very little hands-on experience. So I wanted to take a stab at learning it and getting a certification along the way. So that was kind of my motivation for taking the exam. But um, before I dive into that, uh, I just want to mention that certifications are just certifications. They're just pieces of paper or digital badges that say X person is accredited to use Y technology. Nothing more, nothing less. So don't take them too seriously. Um, they can be useful in your career, but they're not the end all be all of everything. Personally, I'm pretty early on in my career, so I thought taking this certification exam could be a good resume boost, but wasn't the only reason for taking this exam. I'm also a big learner. I love picking up new technologies, so I thought might as well get a certification with it. So moving on, um, in this video, we're going to cover how to prepare for the exam, what to expect on the exam, including all the weird test proctoring and UI things. And then lastly, we can get to the fun part where I show you all my test results. So first section, how to prepare. The absolute first thing I recommend you do is to set a deadline. Personally, for me, it was 30 days. It wasn't a hard deadline. And if you need more time or less time, you should definitely be flexible. But having a time constraint goal helps you stay on target and track your progress. Secondly, there are a ton of resources out there for learning Terraform. Um, personally, I use the course from a cloud guru, but there's a ton of them on YouTube or Udemy. Um, just take your pick. I'm pretty sure they're all pretty good. Um, just pick one and stick with it. That's my recommendation. But if you can, try to pick a course that has hands-on labs. Um, it's one thing to learn and read things on paper just watching videos, but I believe that really working with a technology is the best way to solidify your own understanding. And once you've done all that, I definitely recommend practicing by doing a small project by yourself that goes beyond Terraform basics. Definitely make sure to use modules and advanced features such as dynamic blocks or meta arguments like depends on. Um, and then make sure you also experiment with Terraform Cloud. Terraform Cloud was something that I didn't score too well on on the exam because I didn't have much experience with it, but it is covered in the exam objectives and just using Terraform Cloud in a basic fashion and having that kind of understanding will definitely help you do well on the exam. Once you got your Terraform knowledge on lock, it's time to do some exam specific prep. So my number one recommendation is to find practice exams online. Um, there's a ton of them, you just gotta Google for them. And you don't need to treat them like the actual exam or mock exams right off the bat. Personally, I just went through all the questions. If there was anything I was shaking on, I just opened the document in Terraform and then read through all of that. It's a good way to review things that you might be shaking on and a good way to see things that you potentially might've missed in your studies. Next, don't discount anything that you see in the docs. Even if it says deprecated, stuff like Terraform Taint are still fair game on the exam. And just to reiterate, make sure you get some hands-on practice with Terraform Cloud and Terraform Enterprise if you can. Next, make sure you have a basic understanding of HashiCorp's other products, such as Sentinel, which offers policy as code for your infrastructure as code in Terraform, to make sure that your Terraform lives up to security standards. And finally, to cover any gaps, make sure that you check the exam review guide, which has an outline of all the topics that could potentially be covered on the exam. And just a final note on the exam, it's not a super hard exam, just show up knowing your stuff and you'll be fine. Now in this exam logistics and tips section, I'm gonna throw a lot of tips at you. They're all individually useful, even though it might sound a little bit scattered, organized to the best of my ability, but they should be helpful. Um, logistically, make sure you reschedule. If you need to reschedule 48 hours in advance, it will lock you out if you uh, don't do it before then. The test unlocks 30 minutes before the appointment. My appointment was at four, I could get in at 3.30. Now the pre-exam process was the most frustrating for me. If you haven't taken any online certification proctored exams like this, this will be very new to you and potentially stressful. Um, they make you download a secure browser, your camera and your microphone are on at all times. They make you do a full room scan and they check your computer to make sure you don't have any apps running in the background. Um, personally, it took me about 20 minutes of cleaning my desk or making the proctor happy before I actually got to start the exam. Um, so just be on the lookout for that. They also tell you not to move your lips during the exam. I guess they assume that you're cheating if you do, but if you're someone like me who likes to occasionally mouth read the longer or tougher questions, um, just be prepared to not do that. 
Again, the whole pre-exam process was my least favorite part. It stressed me out before the exam, and I started kind of with not the best mentality, but I'm letting you know now so you can mentally prepare for it. Next, just some tips on the UI, not the greatest UI. The questions are very left justified and the timer is very right justified. So personally, I have a bigger monitor. So I was looking at like basically the first third of my monitor for 90% of the exam. But the other times when I had to check the time, I would like move my entire head to the right. Um, just a small gripe. If you're on a smaller screen or a laptop, you're probably fine. On the interface itself, you have the ability to mark questions for review. So if there's anything difficult, don't spend too much time on it. Just flag it and come back later when you have more time because you probably will have more time at the end, which I'll get to in a bit. Lastly, just a minor gripe. There's about a second delay between loading different questions. Um, so just be ready for that. And last on this section, I'll just cover my pace going through this exam. 60 minutes, 57 questions. Um, personally, I think I went a little bit fast, but depending on your test taking style, these blocks are probably going to move around a little bit. Don't take these as hard guidelines. Just in general, this is how I did it. It took me 30 minutes to finish my first pass through, doing every single question, marking the ones for review that I couldn't quite get. And then I came back, took another 10 minutes to review all the questions that I marked as review. Then I took the final 20 minutes to review everything. So time definitely wasn't an issue. As long as you're answering questions faster than one per minute, I think you'll be fine. Again, just make sure you don't get stuck on any one question for too long. You can always flag it and come back later. And now we get to the fun part. So results are sent immediately after the exam. So you get to know instantly if you pass or fail, there's no waiting around. Um, they're broken down by objective per the objectives outline, which is at this link right here. Very similar to the study guide. And they send you a cool credly badge if you pass. Oops. Um, mine looks like this right now, but um, fun fact, they updated the badge in between the time I completed the exam and the time I'm recording this video. The old badge looks like this. Um, so I guess they're kicking in some update. I'm not sure. So when they send your results an email, they break it down by category. You can use mine as kind of a guide here. You can see that uh, I didn't do well on the Terraform Cloud and Enterprise capabilities, as I alluded to earlier. Um, and some other sections, like understanding Terraform's purpose, I guess I didn't do too well on. But you can use this as kind of an unscientific guide on different areas where you might want to focus a little bit more. But again, these are just my results. And finally, they give you a reported score. They don't tell you how they weight the categories, and they don't tell you what the pass or fail score is, but they will tell you whether you passed or failed. So that concludes my HashiCorp Certified Terraform Associate Exam Guide. Hopefully you got something useful out of it. If you did, consider dropping a follow, leave a comment when you pass. And um, again, you can reference this document at Jedi's Code slash resources on GitHub at any time. And um, that's it. So good luck and have fun.